new, 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 Okay, the start of the show tonight, just like you, Lady, our, our community, our customer is the tirade of your team who makes this go is. Yeah, the Metro ESP32 S3 is finally in the shop. We had this as it coming soon for a bit. Thanks to everybody who signed up. We will notify you if you signed up. I wanted to make sure that we had some for people watching the show live. Um, it's chock full of stuff. So let's, we can either go to the overheading or the next image. Yeah. Okay. So you got your ESP32 S3 room module that's in the middle there. It's pre-certified uh, with you know FCC and C certifications for the emitter. It's got 16 megabytes of flash memory built in and eight megabytes of octal PS RAM, which means it can drive you know these cool TFT displays. It can drive LED matrices. It's got so much RAM and so much flash. It'll fit like pretty much every project you can. And you know they do make versions that have even more, like they have 16 and 16 or 32 and 16. But I wanted to strike a balance. I thought this was a good amount. Like you can definitely drive TFT displays, but you also aren't you know paying as much as the you know the higher prices of the modules. I think this is a, a, a very roomy module. It's got USB C. So if that's power and programming and debugging, there's also the debug port. So if you want to connect an external USB to serial converter for debugging on the hardware you are, that's available. I also put out the JTAG connector. Um, I'll be honest, I've never really used the JTAG connector on the ESP32 S3, but they do have support for uh, step debugging with open OCD. You can check out their tutorials on doing that. And the connector is there ready to go. Um, you've got the boot button and the reset button, so you can put it to bootloader mode and reset it. Um, you have the Arduino compatible pinout, and I did my best to make the pin number match the native GPIO of the ESP while also matching um, the Arduino numbering. Only thing that didn't make it is 0 and 1 are actually 40 and 41, the, the RX and TX, because pin 0 is actually not uh, available. It's used for the bootloader, so I figured, you know, I'll just name them RX and TX. And then next to the RX and TX, it's also a battery uh, charging and monitoring circuit. So if you want to plug in a LiPo battery, you know, you can get, especially if you cut the trace for the NeoPixel, you can get down to about 100, 120 microamps. So it can get fairly low power. Um, the NeoPixel does draw like half a milliamp. So uh, you do have to cut that trace if you um, want to get to the lowest power usage. But, you know, it's still it's still a fairly good low power uh, performance. Not as good as the Feather because it's optimized, but still quite good. Stem QT pinout for connecting sensors plug and play. Even has a spot for a micro SD card. So great for data logging uh, or reading CircuitPython or uh, file storage. And that's connected to the hardware SPI pins. On off switch and you can plug it into a DC jack, 6 to 12 volts DC. So if you want to power, you know, big motors, um, and you want like one 12 volt power supply, this will have a, a built-in regulator to give you five and three volts um, while you can still um, uh, use it for uh, powering your motors or your 12 volt LED strip. And uh, fully assembled and you just can use it with CircuitPython, you can use it with Arduino. It's like super chunky and great for developing with, you know, basically the latest uh, Espresso chip, very powerful Wi-Fi and Bluetooth low energy capable Arduino, CircuitPython, MicroPython. Everyone loves this chip. And that's a Metro format.